So for us today, we have a wonderful gospel room. i got to admit, on the way into church, someone was grumbling that they think my internet homilies are shorter than the homilies on the weekend, which is true. There's no doubt about that. But to that, I I just want to respond. First off, I think that person must have high-speed internet that must play faster at home, and that's why it seems slower in church. But also, I want to make sure that you're not feeling gypped, like the people in the gospel reading. You know, the people who came at 5 o'clock at the usual daily wage, I just want to make sure you guys feel like you're getting extra. But I must admit, it's rare that I get complaints that Mass is too long, since we're usually out of here in 40 to 45 minutes these days. But for us, it is a great joy to come together. You know, there's one thing that's very true about our faith, is that the Catholic faith instills a good work ethic. And there really is no doubt about this. In fact, this parable is really instilling that sense of a good work ethic, but also a good work ethic that's also tempered by God's mercy. That God isn't demanding us of us some crazy overtime kind of work life in order to get into heaven. Rather, his mercy makes up for our shortcomings. But that being said, Jesus makes it very clear that only those who really labor as disciples and live their whole lives for the faith really enjoy the peace and the blessing that God has intended for us from the foundations of the world. And thus, my brothers and sisters, one way to read this gospel reading is not so much, oh, how can I show up at 5 o'clock and get the daily wage and go to heaven without having to live the faith? There's plenty of people trying to do that right now, and they're not sitting here right now. But really, the true meaning is, how do I labor with the Lord, which is the greatest honor? How can I make sure I hear the Lord's call to work early in the morning so that I can truly live a fruitful life, a life that has meaning and purpose for the kingdom of heaven? I wonder sometimes, if jealousy exists in heaven. Because to think that heaven is just an even playing ground, we're all like on the same level, that's completely a farce. There's nine choirs of angels, and we believe that we will occupy those places that were abandoned by the demons and the devil when they fell from heaven like lightning. And thus some people, in some sense, will be more exalted than others depending on the merits of their lives but also on God's call and God's graces to them. Is there jealousy in heaven? Is there jealousy in purgatory? You better believe it. I think that's why a lot of people do go to purgatory, is because maybe there's a lot of jealousy. Maybe St. Peter allows us to peek in the door and we recognize that certain people are in heaven, and then it's pretty clear that we're not ready to go in yet. We need a little time out. We've got to get over ourselves before going in. We need a little bit of healing from that. But notice this ever so human jealousy in this parable where the ones who worked all day are jealous that they didn't get more because the ones who came last got the full daily wage. But if we're really going to live our faith, do we wait in the marketplace all day long for Jesus to come by or do we go looking for him? Do we wait to be called to labor or do we try to find the job site ourselves. And I think this is where the Lord gives us a choice. Because we can either have an active faith or a passive faith. Passive faith is one that waits around and waits for certain things to happen and then maybe we'll respond. Maybe. An active faith is one that looks to see how we can be useful. To see where the Lord may be calling us. And in eagerness we go out and ask the Lord if we can go there and do this. In a sense the active faith goes knocking on the door of the vineyard before the sun rises, asking if we can work today. If he needs laborers today, we don't necessarily wait to be asked. We ask the Lord. And see, this is a big difference in faith. Because it's very easy to live a a passive faith. And then just to throw up our hands and say, well, the Lord never called, the Lord never came by, so I'm good to do whatever I want. You know, unless the priest calls me every weekend to go to church, I'm not going. Which, if that were help, I'll start doing that. But in the other sense, do we have an active faith where we choose, where we desire, and in a sense, we try to make it happen. 
not out of arrogance and pride, but out of a great zeal to help. I've noticed sometimes that there's certain people that other people are jealous of. And oftentimes, in the church and in society, people get jealous of other people's success. But this is a bit unfair, because a lot of times, not all the times, when people are successful, it's because they worked harder. It's because they took those initiatives. It's that they made those sacrifices on a continual basis, and those that are jealous are just sitting with their arms folded, not doing anything, living a passive life, not working hard, not doing those things. In a sense, when we ourselves are jealous, it's kind of that red flag in our own hearts saying, wait a minute, should I be doing more? Should I be a bit more active? Maybe my jealousy is actually a judgment and reflection on myself, knowing where I should be and I'm not because of my shortcomings, rather than this person's so bad and it's not fair. Isn't that kind of what's going on in our country these days? Isn't this the more national dialogue taking place of what kind of culture are we going to have? Are we going to have a culture with good Catholic work ethic? Are we going to have a culture where others make the decisions and take care of us? What kind of culture do we want to live? A Catholic culture always engenders a culture of work ethic, of personal responsibility. And I'm willing to bet there's no one here that disagrees with that. But this is where we need to choose how we live, how we look at each day, and the choices that we make. In our first reading, we hear very clearly from the prophet Isaiah, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Meaning, take the opportunities that God has given us. Don't wait. Don't flounder. And so too, St. Paul to the Philippians in our second reading, where he's saying, to me, life is Christ and death is gain. This passage really reminds me of our former bishop, Bishop Lestecki, who you know ordained me to the priesthood and was our bishop during most of my time in seminary. You remember Bishop Lestecki's coat of arms was, Christ is life, of course, coming from Philippians. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know what I shall choose. I am caught between the two. Meaning, I'm good to keep going. I'm good to get going. I'm good either way, because I'm with the Lord either way. I can't think of a more blessed life than that. A more peaceful life. To know whether we go or we get going, we're with the Lord. We're at peace. To know that we're laboring here or we're laboring there. We're happy to live for the Lord. But to get to that point, it takes the virtues that come from good work ethic, good Catholic values, and the way we interact with one another and with society and with the things that we do throughout the day. So my brothers and sisters, as we pray in this Mass today, let us pray for a renewal in our church and in our nation of a good Catholic work ethic. Let us pray that we won't be waiting for the handout, but that we'll be eager to be of service for others. I was pretty inspired on Thursday. How many of the families coming to our mobile pantry were asking how they could get involved this week? I think they noticed we were just slightly shorthanded in the food pantry. My goodness, I can't tell you the nap I took after the food pantry this week. I was running all over the place, as many of us were. But it was amazing when they noticed the shortage of people. They asked, how can I get involved? What can I do? And some of them said, you know, Father, I'm sorry, I really can't make a donation. That's kind of why I'm coming here. And I said, well, if you want, come early next week. Help us serve food, and then when you got to go, you got to go. We can always use more helping hands. And I just think how beautiful that is. And frankly, isn't it the way that God is to us? How even though we need help, he helps us to be of service because when we're of service, that we're also being helped ourselves. So let's pray. Pray for those who maybe be stuck without good work ethic, but also pray that our culture may continue to be more Catholic in the way we look at this life, the purpose of this life, the way we look to the needs of others more than our own. God bless you.